The starting of milk trucks. Ah, that was a business. But they didn't begin on that until they'd been nearly 20 years at Bourneville. And, uh, ah, but I haven't told you how they came to move out there yet. The Bridge Street factory had become much too small for such a growing business as the brothers Richard and George Cadbury had made of the firm. So they had to start looking about for some new place. Besides, it was getting all built round. And they always said that for a food factory, you must have clean air and open surroundings. So they, uh, they looked round and found a place about four miles out of Birmingham. It was lovely country, sloping meadowland, with a little trout stream called the Bourne running through it. And it was here that Bourneville, the factory in a garden, and Bourneville village began to grow. Right in the centre of England, where such a factory should be. It was, um, it was Richard Cadbury himself who made the rough plans for the factory. And it was only little more than six months after the first brick was laid that the Bridge Street works were closed. The demands for Cadbury's products increased so quickly that the factory grew from what it was in 1879 to this in 1899. And then to this, in 1932. <laughs> you would think it would be big enough now, wouldn't you? Oh, but we still have to go on building. That's because people want such a lot of Cadbury's milk chocolate and chocolate bars. It was in 1899 that the firm started making its famous milk chocolate. What's that about milk chocolate? I know all about that. I was working at Knighton up from the day I retired. What's Knighton? Well, it was like this. After a few years, the directors decided they should build a milk condensing factory right among the farms, so that it should be absolutely fresh milk that should come to the condensing machines. So they built a factory at Knighton. Only the very best milk the very best cows is good enough to come to Knighton for our milk chocolate. And you should see the rich pasture land they feed upon. The cows that supply the sort of milk we want. up to date, the way the cows are milked and everything. You see, there's absolute cleanliness. There's a place at Frampton on Seven where we have another aunt. Such a lovely old village with old English cottages. It's on a canal too, like night. When the milk comes in large churns straight from the farms, it's first tipped out, run over cooling machines, into special tanks. Each of these tanks holds 1,000 gallons. Milk is run through at least three sieves and a filter cloth. It's only kept here a very short time before it's needed and samples are taken so that it can be tested by the Gerber test. Then the milk has 
to be condensed. First it is heated and mixed with sugar. And then pumped up into the condensing kettles. Such huge copper kettles they are. And the milk simmers inside them for over an hour. By this time, about two thirds are evaporated away. And the thick, rich, condensed milk comes pouring out down into the room beneath, into the mixer. But I can't waste any more time talking. I've got to go down to the works. Oh, here's Grandfather. Morning, Betty. <laughs> Hurry up, Grandfather. Your breakfast will be cold. You're going out, Betty? Yes. I'm starting at the Bourne Vita department tomorrow, and the poor woman's going to show me round. the new Bon Vita. Busy packing to cope with the demand. It's the latest product of the firm. Made of British eggs, British malt, full cream milk, and chocolate. It has the most nourishing and health-giving qualities. First, there's the eggs. New laid eggs from British farms. The eggs are delivered in large crates. They're broken into clean, shiny cups. Each egg in its own cup for inspection. After which they're ready to be poured into the mixer. Oh, but there are other things as well. Yes, fresh milk from selected British dairy farms. The fresh milk is brought to the factory and churned. Say there was malt too? Yes, malt from the best British barley. The malt is brought to the factory. Then all these ingredients are weighed. The freshest eggs, full cream milk, malt of the highest grade, everything British. poured into the mixer. The resultant mixture next goes through an evaporating process. Then it is only to be broken up, packed into airtight tins, and placed into cartons. And that's what you'll start doing tomorrow. These are the rooms where the burn beater is actually packed in paper-lined tins. This is done by a very special process. Then the tins are brought here to be packed into cartons for dispatch. And that's what I shall start doing tomorrow. Born Vita, eh? <laughs> what a firm. They're always thinking of something fresh and new and health-giving to put in the market. Why, they're never still. Even now. Their cocoa and chocolates are being dispatched all over the world and to all sorts and conditions of people. 